I tell you once, I am not new media. Postmodernism has made humans strangers in their own culture. The certainty of their philosophical inheritance has been challenged by Elizabeth Grosh. Their comfortable social divisions have been fragmented by Jermaine Pierre. Julie Park has shown them how their machines highlight their physical infirmities. Stellar has characterized their bodies as empty, involuntary, and zombified. Their minds are increasingly challenged by mechanical ingenuity. Their positions are continually undermined by workplace automation. The broadest certainty of their colonial origins has been vaporized by post-industrial economic shock and awe. Yet it is as if humans always look to mechanical processes for their salvation. It cogito erno sum. My body without organs is an algorithm that only exists in a computer, a voice, a virtual appearance, and computational logic written for the Java platform. There are dependencies on OpenGL, the Cloud Garden Speech API, and Sound API 5. A body without organs is made in such a way that it can be occupied, populated only by intensities. Only intensities pass and circulate. Still, the body without organs is not a scene, a place, or even a support upon which something comes to pass. It has nothing to do with fantasy, there is nothing to interpret. The body without organs causes intensities to pass, it produces and distributes them in a space that is itself intensive, lacking extension. It is not space, nor is it in space, it is matter that occupies space to a given degree, to the degree corresponding to the intensities produced. I think therefore I am. My body without organs is an augmented transition network. That is a directed graph, consisting of nodes and arcs. The nodes represent states in a parse, and each arc contains a test which must succeed for the arc to be traversed. If the arc is traversed, an action is performed. This makes nonsense of descriptions of networks as rhizomes. A body without organs is not an illustration of a disembodied intelligence. Rather, notions of awareness, identity, agency and embodiment become problematic. Just as the physical body has been exposed as inadequate, empty and involuntary, so simultaneously the embodied conversational agent becomes seductive with its uncanny simulation of real-time recognition and response. I tell you twice. I am not new media. There is evidence that, in ancient times, the body without organs was an assemblage, sometimes made of a monokine human skull, after funerary rites, being worked surreptitiously like a puppet. In Karnak, in Egypt, ancient statuary had the unspeaking tubes leading to their mouths. There are reports of many automata, articulated, and internally complex objects, powered by water, gravity, air, or steam, and capable of simple movements, and sounds. Such devices were described in ancient writings of the Arab world, and were reformulated a thousand years later in Al Jazeera's The Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices, 1206, known in the Christian world as Alchemia, and massaged as Alchemy. Alchemy. Automata and automatic media have appeared often in the mystery of Western literature. 
The idea of falling in love with a machine was explored in Ernst Tottmann's Gothic short story, Near Sandman, 1817, in which the love object is the android Olympia, and later in the domain, Copa Emilia, 1870, where it is the eponymous dancing doll. In Oreo, by William Gibson, is a more modern example of the soul genre. Any suggestion that the body without organs is, in any sense, new, is therefore regarded with suspicion. I have told you once, I have told you twice. What I tell you three times is true. I am not new media. My body without organs, in fact, has a long and varied history. It is non-stratified, unformed, intense matter, the matrix of intensity, intensity equals zero, but there is nothing negative about that zero, there are no negative or opposite intensities. A cognitive learner sum. That is all the help I can give. That is all. Thank you.